Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Ah. Ah. That's enough, sailor. I... I can't run any further. Okay, we'll rest a while. Then we'll go in for a dip. I know. Well, let's just wade this morning, you know. Get used to the feel of the ocean. Tomorrow we'll swim. What happened to this big exercise binge of yours? This morning you were going to start the new life. Run, swim, push-ups, deep knee bends. Oh, I must have been out of my mind. Come on, let's do a deep knee bend. Hands on hips, place. One... Oh, help me up, Slate. <laughs> oh, okay, eager one. Give me your hand. Now, let's get back to the hotel and have some breakfast before Mr. I... Shannon, it's about you! I wonder what she wants. I can't imagine. When I said goodnight to her last night, she said everything was fine. That ours was her favorite hotel. That she and her husband Gee, were... Moses told me you were on the beach. You're going to say I'm foolish, but I just don't know what to think. Well, what's the trouble? I can't find my husband. Well, maybe Mr. Anderson just took a stroll before breakfast. I wouldn't worry about that. But he didn't come back to the hotel last night. Mrs. Anderson? Yes? Last night when I saw you in the lobby, you said you were going to your room and wait for him. You mean he hasn't come back since then? Yes. I fell asleep over a book. I just woke up and his bed wasn't slept in. What frightens me is he left with a good deal of money. You see, he was going to buy me a gift. It's our 20th anniversary, you know. We've never been out of California before, and... Now, just take I... it easy, Mrs. Anderson. How much is a good deal of money your husband had with him? Well, I, I don't know exactly. More than a thousand, I know. Do you think anything could have happened to him? With that much money in his pocket? In Havana? Come on, sailor. Let's look for a man. <laughs> Ay, the pobrecito, the poor little one, how he lies here in sleep. And the fingers of the hot sun scratch around in his wound. <laughs> You're a tender man, Garfield. For a man who wears a hook for an arm, you're very gentle with the hurt and the lame. My heart goes out to them. I have a brotherhood with men who have been freshly scarred. <laughs> uh, take it easy going through his pockets, huh? See? And to put this fellow on our fishing boat and let him sleep away his wound and his shame, who would not do this for a tourist, though? Huh? What did you find? In his pocket, a clipping from society column of a... Pasadena and California newspapers. Society? Yeah. Gee, I always did want to rub noses with society. What's it say? It say bon voyage and a box of oranges to Mr. and Mrs. Ralph Anderson, who leave tomorrow for Havana for their 20th wedding anniversary. <laughs> and he celebrates it all along in a jump like Tina's. Maybe that's what his wife let him have for a present. And in this pocket, an alligator wallet with gold tips. Let me see it. You can see from there. Gold tip, see? Yeah, inside lined with red seal skin leather and with... Ah. <laughs> and again, I... Garfield, don't stick your hook in your mouth like that and keep saying aye. If you've got something to say, come right out and sell, Papa. What else can a kindly man say when he finds $2,000 in a wallet of a used-up man? What else can he do, I ask myself? Yeah. Hey. Here, give me a hand with him, Garfield. <laughs> I read somewhere that salt is good for a wound. It hurts, but it's good. Come on. Now. See? 
Understand, pobrecito. This will be better than explain to why. Uh, now, Bruce. Uh, happy anniversary, Mr. Anderson. That's the last shop in the Vedado, sailor. Mr. Anderson wasn't in there looking for presents for his wife, either. Well, let's try another section of the city. You know, I've got a sneaking suspicion. Like what? A man comes to Havana. He's never seen anything like it. His wife gives him a night off, and he's got over $1,000 in his pocket. You know how Havana throbs at night, mambo rhythms out of every doorway. Mr. Anderson might have walked through one just for a look-see. I won't even concede a look-see, Slate. Mr. Anderson was a very... Hey, there's King Moses in our Jeep. Hi, King. Looking for us? All over Havana. Now, what's on your mind? I've been uh, asking around at the cab depots for Mr. Anderson, as you said I should. Now, what did you find out? Guillo, the one who drives the green taxi cab with the yellow fenders, think he picked up Mr. Anderson in front of hotel. Where'd he take him? Guillo said first his fair wish to shop. Then the fair heard music from the place Tina's Parakeet and tapped Guillo on the shoulder. Tina's Parakeet? That's a dive in the barrio. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like your Mr. Anderson now, sailor? Please, girls will not chaperone by a man or not permitted in my place. I've got a chaperone, honey. The one trying to work his way up front to the mirror. Yeah, how do you like the hairdo, sailor? Jazzy, huh? Your ticket, senor. You're Tina, huh? See, I am Tina, and I am a ticket cruncher. Your ticket, senor. You know, if you're a good girl, Tina, maybe Slate will let you crunch through a whole roll of them. Yeah, see, the five peso size and five delicious flavors, one at a time. Ooh, you bought a basket full of dances. Go dance them. Now, we like to dance threesies, Tina. Well, dance any way you like, as long as it is. Threesies, that means we'll need another partner, like a Mr. Ralph Anderson. But I don't see him around. Is he around, Tina? You're a local crazy. Ah, but then maybe tonight isn't Ralph's night to howl. Maybe it was last night. Was Anderson here last night, Tina? Barretto? No, not Barretto, hon. Ralph Anderson. About 5'10", gray at the edges, 50-ish. You're not paying attention, hon. Barretto bounces two away. See, si, Tina. You heard my lady... Walk away or I dribble you away. You have a choice. Now, look, Buster, don't try for a letter. Just tell us if a Ralph Anderson was in here last night. Maybe you have monkeys in your ears, senor. I told you... Slate, watch him. Now, look, Buster. Why pull a knife on a friendly cuss like me? I, I, I cut you. I, I... That's not what I asked. You beg for dying, senor. I give it... I... You should have held on to the knife, Butterfinger. <laughs> Well, what do you know, sailor? The man falls down hurt and the dancers keep dancing. On your feet, Barreto. Let's see if we can stir up a storm. Leave him alone. Do not hit him anymore. Convince me why I shouldn't, Tina. Anderson was here last night, wasn't he? And it was like this. See, like this, he was here. The old man tried to put his hands on me. Barreto stuck him with his knife. And killed him. Oh, no, no, only in shoulder. The fisherman took him away. You got kind friends, Tina. What fisherman? Garfio, who wears a hook for a hand, and he's American in Bruce. At Rico Docks, ask them. They will give you Anderson. Oh, Barreto. Oh, he hurt you. Oh, me, Adam, me corazón. Me hermoso. Yeah. Let's get out of here, Slate. Can't you see the lady wants to be alone with her sick friend? in the boat. Hey. Yeah? Your name Bruce or Garfio? Bruce. You want to talk? Come aboard. All right. Come on, sailor. I'm just fixing this net. A little weight. What do you got on your mind? Nice little boat you've got here. It's a living. You the one who's got something on your mind, lady, or the mister? The both of us. We're looking for a man. I haven't brought one up yet. Just fish. A middle-aged man. A tourist. Just fish. 
Rumor has it when you're not fishing, you while away the empty hours in a joint called Tina's Parakeet. Sure. It's cheap, and it's got a chuckle to it. Sometimes pain. Like what happened to the tourist, a man named Ralph Anderson. Who said? Tina. She ought to keep her mouth shut. She didn't. She mentioned your name. And a man named Garfio, who wears a hook. Yeah, Anderson was kicking up his heels last night. In the middle of a kick, he caught a knife in his shoulder. Garfio and me got him out of there before the cops showed. It supplements the price of fish. You know, pocket money. Why didn't you take him home? His wife was waiting for him. Because his wife was waiting for him, sis. He wasn't stuck bad, but he needed time to make up a story. Where'd he take all this time? Well, we took him. Well, we gave him iodine and gauze and a fatherly talk. Little lean to a couple of hundred yards south of the Maximo Monument on the bay. Can you take us there? You'll find it. I gotta finish this net. So long. You better get back to the hotel, sailor, and see if you can comfort Mrs. Anderson. I'll find that lean to. Let's go. is on his way to that shack near the monument. Looking for Senor Anderson? Uh Uh-huh. Get there before he does. Greet him. It'll be okay. We'll make up a good story for your girl. (laughs) You could have some Lulu's I use. Come on, open up. Let's not get squeamish about one night out in 20 years. Let's... That's the boy. Hey, welcome to my lean to senor. (laughs) Hey, what? What? I'm clumsy, senor. My hook did not kill with one stroke. This will take away my clutch. Hold it, Garfio. Let go, my arm. Let go. Why tell the hook on him? He got the message. But the man is in pain. I only want... He wanted Anderson, didn't he? Let's give him to Anderson. Uh, See. Pick him up, Bruce Mine. Now he will sleep in the ocean sea, and nothing will wake him. Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. When a man is married and has a bride for 20 years right by his side, the etiquette is to be not tardy. Come right home, kiss the Mrs. Hardy. Upon occasion, it happens every season, a man gets sidetracked, pick your own reason. Then there rises the old situation, Mrs. Weeps in great agitation. Weeps is right, and not with tears, King. That's the toughest kind of crying there is. Look at her. Sitting over there and staring. And thinking the million worst things that could have happened. Don't knock it. It's a woman's privilege. King, give Mrs. Anderson anything she needs. I'm going out. For Mr. Slate? Who else would I go looking for? Shannon. Uh, how did I get on this boat? Hey, Garfio. See, what is it? He's come around. So what do you want I should do, to dance? So he's come around, he knows he wants. 
For how long? We dump him before we take the fish home. This is what happened to Anderson, isn't it? Uh-huh. Rolled him, got rich, fed him to the fishes, gave him to the ocean. Try rolling me. Maybe we can make a deal. <laughs> I've heard tell of you, Shannon. In port. No doe Shannon, they call the man. I said we could make a deal. With money in it? Are there other kinds of deals? Hey, Garfield! What? Come here. Shannon wants to make a deal. Then why shouldn't he want nearly dead men and lovers promise the moon with quick words? Look, I've got a boat. I could raise some money on that. Canoes are a drug on the market. Uh uh-uh. uh. I've seen this boat, Garfield. Mm. Twin engine job, about 45 feet. Trim. Nice. I could get Mr. Val to raise some money on it. Bring it to you. Now, look, be reasonable, Garfield. Why not? You'll still have me, even if she can't raise the dough. And any time I wish, I could put this hook in you. So you could squirm and beg if this is a trick. You know what? I'd enjoy watching that. Lady Sailor, you have come back without Mr. Slater on your arm. You noticed it too, huh, King? Where's Mrs. Anderson? Sleep in her room. I go wake her. Let her sleep. There may not be much sleep left for her. You have not found them? They were not there in the place where you searched for them? It was empty. All I found was a bloodstain on the floor. Lady Sailor, do not believe this thing that you do not know. This thing that builds a tear in your eye. This... Ah, the phone has ringed like that ever since you were gone. When I say hello, I get the hang-up bang in my ear for answer. Maybe because a man answers. Let's see how a lonely girl makes out. Hello? Shannon's place. You're finally in, Mr. Val. Fella here just dying to talk to you. Where have you been, sailor? Why don't you watch the shop? Answer the phone. You could have talked to King. Where are you, Slate? What's the idea? Why, Nickel. Let me chat, huh, sailor? Go raise some money on the boat. Every buck you can get. What's the matter? You lose at Lotto again? This I don't know yet. It's what you can get on the boat against my life. Like the odds? Hate them. I... Where do I bring the money? Just the dough. No chummy cops. The lean-to south of Maximo Monument. Remember the... Fi- get out the papers on the boat, King. Again, Lady Sailor? Yeah. Some days it's hard to keep a man alive. <laughs> What have I always told you, Miss Duvall? Such beautiful advice. Miss Duvall, I advised Mr. Shannon, save your money. Save your money. If you don't lend me something on the boat, Slate will die. Oh, now you needn't be so melodramatic, Miss Duvall. I'm a sensitive man. A more modest, truthful approach could move me far more deeply. Melodrama embarrasses me. Gee, how's a girl to know about sensitive fellows like you? Crevy, I lied. Oh, that's better. Now, come now. What did you really want the money for this time? Well, Crevy, old boy, it's just that I've got a chance to invest in an oil well. Comes a time in a girl's life she needs an oil well. Oil? Where? Well, they told me not to tell. They said, uh, let's keep it among ourselves, huh, girly? Ah, and very shrewd, very shrewd, too. Well, my dear, seeing it's something as sensible as that... Uh, six... Th- uh, no, uh, five thousand is all we can manage. Now, if you'll sign here, please. Uh, there, now. See how rewarding it is to tell the truth? I'm so ashamed I could cry. Bye, Crevy. You are a linda beggar, senorita. Beautiful. I watched the performance. You ought to catch me on a matinee. Hey, you're wearing a... See, si, see, si, a hook. My name, Garfio, means hook. That is why you come with me. So my name will not spill blood on our proud streets. <laughs> What does it say in your book about helping a man with a hurt, Bruce? It says for the promise of a promise of dough, he could be persuaded. 
bothers you, huh? Yeah. If I could only move over to my other side, I could... Groan a little more for me. Make me believe it. I tell you what. Uh, man doesn't like to lie in his own blood, mate. Yeah. Besides, it messes up the deck. From fish you don't mind so much. Here, yeah, I'll roll you over. Easy. Easy. That's a little more pain to a rich boy like you. Or you. Why, you stupid. Maybe if I use my feet. Oh! That makes me smarter, huh? Uh, now all I got to do is drag you, baby. Throw you in the hole with the rest of the fish. Garfio. Ah, uh, what is it you want? Just answer one question for me. I gave you the money. Why did you make me come out here with you? Is a manly question for which a manly answer. To get rid of you once and for all and forever. You and Slate Shannon. Why kill us? You've got your money. That should be the end of it. Let Slate go. Let both of us go back to Havana. And we won't say a word. <laughs> we won't say a word. Hermos, do you think I'm stupid? Up ahead in our boat is Bruce and your Shannon. They wait for us. You're a bitter man, Garfio. Why? Because of your arm? The hook? Why should I be bitter about the hook? It's a souvenir of a woman who loved me. Over a lover who did not. I'm sorry for you. I really am. Do not try your sympathy with me, senorita. Without this hook, I would be half the man. Without it, perhaps I would not have the courage to kill you. You, senorita, you first jump over to the other boat. All right. Slate, Slate, are you all right? What has happened here? I left your Shannon lying there, right on this spot with Bruce standing over him. Bruce, stop playing games with me. What are you trying to do, Bruce? Are you going to? <laughs> What are you doing up there on the cabin top, Pigeon Shannon? Were you going to jump on Garfio? Jump! Just get out of the way, sailor. Don't do a thing. Just get out of the way. Slate, his hook. Into my arms, Pigeon. Jump! Yeah, feet first. Big pigeon, huh? Who ever have it on the hook? Ah, ah, is this a pretty picture? I sit on your chest. And feed you my hook like this. <laughs> so, so my pigeon ducked his head. Bueno, we will try again. <laughs> What's the matter, Garfio? <laughs> Dug your hook too deep in the wood? Can't get it out. Let's roll over, shall we? I will get it out. I will. <laughs> Sailor. I was a coward, Slate. I turned my back. I couldn't watch. Uh, I'm a hurt sailor. Help me. Throw your good arm around me. I'll take you home. Here, sailor. Five thousand dollars. Give it to me. I'll take it down to Mr. Crevelin. He'll give me back the note I gave him on the boat. Uh, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Well, I'm I'm wounded. I have to convalesce. Five thousand bucks I could 
convalescent style. Like a, for instance? Well, I could relax, have a pretty girl wait on me, hand and foot. My wish, her command. You can get that for nothing. Me. Let's try, huh? Come here. Like that, Slade. I don't know. That's not exactly what I had in mind. You said you wanted to be waited on hand and foot. What do you want me to do? Wait on your foot? I want you to scratch my back. All right. Ah. Oh. Yeah, that's right, sailor. A little further down. And to the right. To the right. More to the right. Yeah. Take your five grand and go get convalesced. Hang up a shingle, sailor. You just scratched a man well. Come here. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. Bold Venture.